what I'm working on today's video is trying to get this thing to start and run and maybe keep it from killing me. And I wonder why some of these projects take so long to get moving. Well, it could be because I get sidetracked and I have to do other projects. Take my little workhorse here. It moves cars around, stuff like that for me, but sometimes it doesn't want to get to work. Today I'm going to show you what I did, putting a new coil on it off of a modern Briggs and Stratton and a couple other things I'm going to do to make it a little more reliable and maybe even a little less dangerous. It won't start. Well, it will start, but it protests a lot. Pull this apart and swap out the magneto. Wow. And while I'm working on it, I will probably weld this back together. Oh, it did loosen up. Pretty simple, all you gotta do is take this cover off, bolt here, bolt right there, bolt down here, down here. And the easiest way to get to this one is through here, I'm finding. And then I gotta take one bolt off here to get the choke cable out of the way. And as I'm looking at these bolts and how easy they are to get to, I almost forgot, I bought this off Amazon several months back. Ratcheting box ends. It helps if you pull the right size out of the bag. And then it helps if you go the right direction with the bolt. Let's get this choke cable out of the way first. And it's as simple as that. And here is the new part. It's a Briggs and Stratton single cylinder coil. After doing a little bit of research online, it doesn't take you long to find YouTube videos on people doing stuff like this and other resources that tell you that this will work and it eliminates your points. Makes this thing a whole lot more reliable and hopefully it'll give it enough spark to start. This says cylinder side and says this side out. What I've seen is this has to be reversed. So the cylinder side has to face you. This side out goes in. Otherwise they won't fire. There's something about a reverse in the polarity of the magnet on this. We'll see how it works. Try not to cut any more wires than I need to here. Uh, I want to get rid of this extra rat's nest of wiring here. Clean this up a little bit right here. Had a little bit of a problem with that wanting to rotate, so what better to work on a 1970s tractor than a 1970s 
set of wrenches. There's a couple missing, but luckily I had the one I needed. So I really don't see a need for a connection right here when this wire is long enough to go all the way through the hole and reach on up to that point right there. So I'm just going to eliminate that. Clean everything up a bit with one of these heavy duty wire brushes. Yeah, it might need a little more than that there. Knock some of this excess dirt out of here though. No uh, nests of any animals in there or anything. That's good. Portable, completely self-contained, compressed air. Don't ask me why. I just have to make things more complicated than they need to be. Well, I think that grommet will fit in there. All you had to do is close the box after you got one grommet out. Couldn't do it, could you? All right, have my mount points cleaned up a little bit. Put the screws back in it. Again with the overkill. What is wrong with you? I figured it can't hurt to protect it a little bit. Kind of close to the exhaust. Kind of close to the exhaust going over here, so go on this side of the intake. And I might end up shortening that wire and putting a new end on it, but let's see if it even gives me spark first. All right, time to set the gap, somewhere around 12 thousandths. One of those is a 10, the other one's a 12. Yeah, one's a 10 and one's a 12. The easiest way to set this gap is with a piece of cardboard, like from a cereal box or something. Uh, thinner cardboard usually comes out to the right thickness, and it's real easy to do it that way. Maybe a little tighter than it needs to be. All right, now let's see if we have any spark. Well, before we do that, there's still a little matter of getting this bracket welded. And that is held in by a bolt, same as here, with a nut on the back side of it. So uh, I'm starting to understand why they put a little splice plate on it. Well, it's out, and uh, yeah, it wasn't easy. Matter of fact, the guy who did this tractor didn't even take this off when he repainted it. There's all kinds of dirt and trash up in there. So maybe while I got this apart a little ways, I'll uh, blow some of that dirt out of there at least. I'm definitely not taking it all the way apart. Anyway, started doing a little cleanup on it. Got to do a little bit more. Put a V-notch in it, weld it. Stick it back in there. 
Well, as usual, with our regularly unscheduled programming, I didn't video any of the putting it back together. Pretty boring stuff anyway, but how about that bracket? Looks like a brand new one. Routed the plug wire, put a little shielding on it. Some of these high-tech plug wire routing devices. She is cold, she's been sitting a little while. Let's see what happens when we hit the key. Normally, this thing spins and spins and spins before it starts. That really helped it. One of the other things that I've put on this tractor that was originally on them, but this one didn't have it when I got it, is a pulse type fuel pump. These fuel pumps just hook into the crankcase. This tractor originally came with one, but it wasn't on it when I got it. And I noticed that the fuel tank is not a whole lot higher than a carburetor. And that was one of my main issues. It would lose power and die because it wasn't getting enough fuel. This is a fuel pump off, I believe, Brakes and Stratton, about 16 horsepower. Any of them will work. Um, they just have three hoses on them. Fuel in, fuel out, and the uh, vacuum line that runs back to the crankcase for the pulse for the pump. I added a shutoff valve, and in this loop of line that goes out and heads over to the carburetor, there is a fuel filter. And there's also the screen in the tank. But like I said, that helped it run a whole lot better, but it didn't help it start any better. It's always taken a long time to start. Oh, and one other thing we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to put new tie rods on it. Because, well, when you're out there hooked up to a trailer and moving the trailer around, and you're moving the trailer around, and you're trying to steer it so you avoid the fence and all of a sudden it doesn't seem to be going the way you want it to go and you realize that the tires are pointed in opposite directions. Well, if the threads are the right size, we'll be all right. Looks right. There have been a few attempts made at trying to get that to uh, stay in there, it looks like. A little bit of wear. I feel safer already. Well, I don't know if I really feel any safer, but I'll bet my fence, my garage door, and any innocent bystanders all feel a lot safer. All right, now it is time for a test drive. Let's see how this thing starts, runs, moves, steers. Fuel on, ignition, contact. That thing has never started that good. Oh, and one other little safety modification that I've done. Uh, I like to call it my tractor's not upside down on top of me and my neck isn't broken because I was stupid and pulled a trailer that's way heavier and it's supposed to be able to pull. This tractor had this hitch on it when I got it, but I made this square tubing slides inside the receiver, goes down, and it has a little flat plate just a couple inches off the ground. A chain runs forward so that it won't bend, break. That way, if I hook up to a trailer, like my car trailer, 
that's way heavier than what a tractor like that should be moving around. I don't end up flipped upside down, lawn tractor on top of me with this stuck in the back of my head. Just a little idea that I came up with. Thought it might save my life one day. Well, at least I got my tractor in running condition so I can use it. That's about it for this time. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And I'll be back with the Celica project soon.